Hans Jörg Kimmich's unit was ordered to rendezvous with another German unit near Rovno in the Ukraine. Between the two units was a Russian division which took 200 German prisoners. The Russians stripped some of the German soldiers naked. They ordered them to take off their uniforms. I don't know why. Then there was terrible confusion, a panic when the prisoners realized that they were going to be killed. And then a few of them managed to run away and reach us, despite having had to run naked through the fields with the Russians shooting after them. And they told us what had happened. Then the next day we attacked and we found about 200 dead who had not fallen in battle. They had been mostly killed by bayonet. Some of them, as we had been told by those who had escaped, had been bound together with barbed wire and hand grenades had been put among them. Well, it was absolutely horrific. This was a shock to us. We hadn't thought that anything like that was possible. Despite inhuman warfare and the problems of weather and geography, the three German army groups were gaining ground fast, too fast for their supply lines to keep up. Hitler temporarily suppressed his longing to take Moscow and, on the 19th of June 1941, diverted reinforcements to his forces outside Kiev, capital of the Ukraine. To the south lay the oil fields of the Caucasus and all the petrol that Hitler needed to keep his tank. Thanks to British intelligence, Churchill had known in advance that Hitler was planning to invade Russia and had tried to warn Stalin but the Soviet leader refused to listen. The British intelligence services were crucial to Churchill's war strategy and secret communications were a regular part of his daily routine. Anything to do with um, Enigma MI5 used to come in a special box to Churchill, a yellow box. And he was, the, uh, not the private secretaries, we certainly didn't, not even the private secretaries had keys. Churchill had the key. I was watching, he would open the box, read the document, close the box, lock it, and it would go back to a man that we knew as C. Many of the documents delivered to Churchill were official German communications decoded by Station X, the top secret code breaking unit at Bletchley Park, northwest of London. Anne Hill was in the Women's Royal Navy Service, a Wren. And I found myself um, being transferred to Bletchley in Buckinghamshire. I was uh, taken in and um, uh, to the house, um, Bletchley Park Mansion, and um, met Commander Travers, who uh, made me sign the Official Secrets Act and said that never in my life must I ever divulge anything that I learnt at Bletchley Park. When you went in, the house was on the left-hand side and a beautiful lake on the right-hand side. Um, and beyond that, there were many, many uh, huts where people worked. There were all these um, hundreds of people and we never knew what went on in any other hut than the one that we were working in. Bletchley Park's primary objective was to break the codes used by the German Enigma machines. With millions of possible encipherments, there was no way the human mind could crack the Enigma codes unaided. Complex computing machines were created to crunch the countless code possibilities. The Wrens had this bomb-proof building rather than a hut because they were working on the um, 
bomb machines, which were B-O-M-B-E machines, which were the, the ones that were um, testing all the possibilities of breaking the codes of the um, German Enigma machines. And that's why they had to be kept so safe. I mean, it was the machines rather than the Reds, I think, <laughs> that were being protected. They knew that they must never talk about their work. And I think that was a tremendous strain for quite a number of them. And when people asked them what uh, they were doing, they would say something like they were doing clerical work, which was a conversation stopper anyhow. <laughs> The intelligence services recruited heavily among the academics of Oxford and Cambridge. In 1941, Oliver Wright was an undergraduate. A recruiting team came round for the intelligence call. Uh, and, I th and I thought, well, uh, I'm quite intelligent, really. Anyway, here I am at Cambridge University, so I must be a bit intelligent. And I thought we were fighting the Germans, and I spoke German, so maybe I should volunteer for the intelligence corps. So when the recruiters arrived, I presented myself, and the interview went something like this. Oh, Mr. Wright, you um, were thinking of joining the intelligence corps, are you? Yes. Uh, why do you want to join the intelligence corps? Well, I, I speak German, and I imagine that would be helpful. Um, tell me, Mr. Wright, do you play chess? No, I'm afraid I don't. Uh, do you do crossword puzzles? No, I've never been able to do crossword puzzles. That'll be all, Mr. Wright. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> that was the end of my foray into the intelligence community.